beef industry has long used scientific principles as the foundation for everything that we do. Because I want to make sure that we can raise cattle next year better than we did last year. Beef. It's what's for dinner. California produces tons of trash. Literally 77 million tons in 2021 alone. That's the equivalent to the weight of about 466,000 blue whales. And more than half of the trash we produce ends up in landfills just like this one. On uh, any given day, we'll take seven to 8,000 tons of material. And they recycle about 25% of that material. The rest gets buried. And that's a problem because landfills are the second largest source of methane emissions in California. But there are small things that we can do that don't feel overwhelming and like a sacrifice. And can have a meaningful impact. Sustainability is based on incremental changes. You can't have the best thing the first time. So we have to get going. And that starts with understanding landfills, the most common means of disposing of solid waste. Hi, I'm Cody Long, video journalist for the Los Angeles Times. I'm at the Simi Valley Landfill, and it's about 30 miles outside of Los Angeles. And I'm here because I want to know what happens to my trash? Where does it go at the end of the day? And what happens to it when it reaches a modern landfill? Down here at the at where it's first being offloaded, it, it seems like the material is in its kind of you know original state. But I see these kind of patches where it, it looks more fine. So what he's doing right now is he's taking that um, the trash that's coming and compacting it, and he's already flattened out this whole top area yeah. here. What you then see are some piles of dirt that are getting moved right in front of us. Yep. So uh, probably in the next couple hours, we will have another um, dozer come and start pushing the dirt over the top of the material. This is essentially like a lasagna of trash and dirt and trash and dirt and trash and dirt. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> the Simi Valley landfill has another 40 years of life left, but there's always a chance it could close early if it reaches capacity before then. And that's why compaction matters. It helps reduce the need to build new landfills. Today's landfills are nothing like the public dumps of the past. They're highly regulated and engineered to protect the environment and public health, and no two are identical in design. But they do have some things in common, like a lining system that prevents solid waste from seeping through and contaminating the water supply, a daily cover to reduce odors, and a gas collection system. As you deposit trash in, inside the landfill, it creates gases. Gases like methane, a byproduct of decomposing organic waste that's a potent greenhouse gas. It can trap up to 84 times more heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. And landfills emit methane and other gases for a long time. When a landfill closes, it's going to be another 100, 150 years that's still generating gas. You'll see in different areas what look like uh, straws or sticks coming out of the ground. Yeah. So those are landfill gas collection wells. Historically, landfills have flared off the landfill gas that they create. This facility uh, manages uh, those, those, those with flares. But that's changing. Behind us here, we just started excavation oh. on our renewable natural gas facility. This particular facility here alone will process all of our gas, shutting our flares off. It'll be piped into the city uh, where it can be used for heating, cooling. It's a major step in what landfills can do to, to, to be a responsible part of the community. Capturing and converting landfill gas into renewable natural gas is one way, but the state's ultimate goal is to reduce the amount of methane landfills produce. In early 2022, California enacted SB 1383, requiring every city and community in the state to divert 75% of its organic waste from landfills by 2025. Who are the largest contributors of food waste? Typically at restaurants, you know, the, the waste stream, it could be 50, 60% food waste, depending on the kind of restaurant it is. Within the residential uh, sectors, between 20 to 25% of the waste that we throw away is probably food waste. If there's one thing that you could take out of, of this, this, the materials that come into a facility like this, what would it be? Uh, hands down, batteries. You know, when you put these batteries in your, in your trash can or your recycling can, they end up at 
uh, our facilities in these trucks, and the trucks pick it up, they compact it, right? They compact the material to fit as much in there, and those batteries can can burst and, and catch on fire. There's a, there's a lot of ways to properly manage batteries. There's, there's household hazardous waste centers in, in nearly every community out here. That's where those batteries should be going. At the end of the day, we still have a waste problem. The single fastest and easiest thing that we can all do to protect our environment, to serve our communities, to fight climate change, is to reduce the amount of waste that we're producing. And to find other uses for the stuff we typically send to landfills. What we've been trying to do as an industry is to look at waste as a resource. If you recycle this, it can be raw materials. Look at the landfill, we can recover gas. So treating it as a resource rather than a waste is a huge part of behavioral modification, but that takes a long time.